Hello and welcome to today's Django tutorial for beginners. In today's tutorial, we are going to use replit.com to make a Django website. That is, you don't need to install anything on your local machine. All you need to do is an account on replit.com. And this is what we are going to make today. This is not a complicated app. It's just simple, but I'm using four different random APIs to make this. The first one is on Splash. Um, API that is it gives us um, high quality pictures and you can just type the name of the image you want just like night for example if I press enter it gives me something like this or if I say sky print enter press enter this gives me an image of the sky or I don't know water this <clears throat> happens okay this is one thing another yeah, API we are going to use is useless fact API. Yes, you heard it right. So useless fact is here. So it gives us some random useless facts and uh, you can also get a useless fact of today. And we are going to use this as well. So uh, whenever I uh, refresh the page, you would see something like this and some random fact comes up like Canada makes up 6.67% of the Earth's land area, for example. The third API is Board API. That is, uh, when you're bored, it suggests you some random activity, like organize your basement, for example. If I refresh the page, uh, you will see that it says, conquer one of your fears, or this is another fact. And the last one is a random dog photo. So it, you can use uh, this API here, dog API, on dog.ceo for slash dog API to give you a random API whenever you refresh uh, the page, it gives you a different image of a dog. So this is what we're going to make today all on Replit. Now let me show you how it is on Replit. Okay, so I'm on my Replit account and here I'm going to create a new REPL and here let's search for Django Django app template and let's give it a name like random for example API create REPL and it's going to create an environment for us without us doing anything so this has created a folder for me my site and then manage.py fi uh, py file and inside in my site you can see all these uh, normal Django files that you normally see URL settings ASCII, WSGI and others but how does that work so you also have a readme file that you can refer to and you see how things are done so we can uh, start an, another app within this website but we are not going to use uh, do that so we are going to use the same folder that we have uh, to be also the folder for our app so what we are going to do first this uh, guide suggests us that we can create a views.py um, file here in this directory and this is what we are going to get into that file so let's do this so let's create a file here, views.py, enter. And this is empty for now. So we are going to copy this. I'm gonna explain what they do. Go back, paste here. So here we are uh, going to import HTTP response from django.http. And then this is a function index that is going to render uh, hello world onto a web page for us but this is something that we define you can call it X or Y or D or whatever but this function is going to be responsible for the things you are going to put out on a web page and this takes a parameter request and it returns this HTTP response hello world but Django needs to recognize it so for now our main settings or our main urls.py doesn't recognize that path so here we need to well first of all we don't need admin 
we are not going to make any admin dashboard or anything so let's get rid of this and this as well so now here we have um, URL patterns and what this is when you go to a website and you type in example.com that is going to be your home page normally but if you type something after it like example.com forward slash about it takes you to an about page so this is if you write about here it means that example.com forward slash about if you say I don't know like a blog it would be example.com forward slash blog but if I leave it out empty it means example.com nothing after it so when someone goes to this URL that is example.com that info whatever your website is it says okay so this is the path I should take what am I going to do with this path I should make something available for the user to view so it sends you to the views file that we just created and says that inside that file look for a function called index again you can name it whatever you want so it is going to take this path sends it to the views and asks the function index to run and that will be what you can see on the page now that we have make this we need to also tell Django let it know about the existence of a views file where is it it's in the same directory so we say from dot that is from the same directory import views now it knows what we are talking about when we say views index it knows okay this views which is in the same directory now it goes inside the views and looks for an index function and this is going to be rendered to the user now what happens if I press run so run runs the server for us normally on your local machine you have to uh, in your command you have to write type something like Python manage.py run server but here if you just press run it's going to run a server for you and it's going to also generate actually a um, the web page here as well so let's see what it generates for us so it's going to take some a couple of seconds okay well it took more than a couple of seconds actually for me so here we are now we have access to this address so I can open it in a new tab let's let me do this so this is hello world now how if I go back and put this in into inside a h1 tag like h HTML h1 tag uh, you will see that it just gets bigger now it's you can see the difference so if I refresh um, yeah sometimes this happens so you need to just wait a bit okay but here you can see that this happened right so but but the thing is we cannot render all our HTML codes here imagine you have a website of I don't know hundreds of lines of HTML you cannot just do it here inside these parentheses you need a proper index.html file to do that so for that we are going to instead of using HTTP response we are going to use a render to render a page and here instead of HTTP we're using short cuts and now again instead of HTTP response we are going to use render and the render this render takes two parameters one is a request and request and then the second one is the address of that HTML file so let's uh, we don't have it yet so let's just uh, create the name here and then we'll create the file itself so let's just say that our HTML file is inside templates and it's called index.html we don't have it in templates folder so we have to you see here you can see the message template doesn't exist so we have to create this and we have to let Django know that there is a templates folder in which there is an index and I want you to have that templates folder as a default fol folder for our templates 
How can we do that? Well, we need to go to our settings. So let me get rid of this. The settings of our main file that is here. Click on this one. And let's find the templates. It's here. But where is our templates? We want to create a folder right here in the base directory. Look, this is uh, where you see this is the base directory base underscore dir dir. So let's copy this and let's go down. So here, the directories of template. I'm going to say it's in the base directory. So that is the first thing we need to do. Now that we have done this. We need to create this in our base directory, not inside my site, but in inside this one. So let's just say, um, nope, not here. So let's just click on something here. Okay, now let's say templates. So I have created this inside the base directory. I want to also add a file, call it index.html. And now here, I can have my HTML page. Let's go to HTML shell so that we can have a ready-made uh, boilerplate. And I want to have this meta tag. Um, I can also have a style sheet. What else? Yeah, common meta tags as well. I think that is, oops. No, yeah, I think that is enough. Yeah, so this is our boilerplate. Let's just copy this and go back and paste it here. Now we have our HTML boilerplate. So let's see if it works. So if I want to put an H1, call it boilerplate. Let's save this. And if I go back, do you think this will change? So here if I refresh, you see, it works. So we have managed to create an index.html. Awesome. Okay, <clears throat> now let's get to our functionality. Now that we have it here, we'll deal with CSS and styling later. So for now, let's go back to our views where we can write our functions, our API calls and everything. So here, let's start with uh, writing our uh, request for the API. The first thing we need to do is to import requests, plural, it's different from this one. So this is library you can request for URL, you can get something, a response back, and then you can do something with that URL and JSON files. Okay, now that we have done this, let's create a variable, let's just call it R, R equals. So we are going to request to get a URL. And what is the URL that we are going to get? Let's go to our Unsplash first. Uh, where is our Unsplash here? So our Unsplash um, API API status uh, view the documentation. Creating a developer account. Well, I don't want to do this. I, I already have uh, some. Yeah, let me just see what I can do now okay so uh, this is actually let me copy and paste this one so this URL is basically the one that we are going to use to get some images so if I write water after this URL you will see some image of water or whatever if I write something like I don't know uh, night for example I get something like that so we're going to use that URL this one later and now and uh, let's let me find my uh, where, where is this not this one okay here all right now let's begin with the random fact so the random fact how does this one work so for this one we need to uh, actually 
Um, do I need to register for this one as well? Okay, let me check. Okay, for this one, this is what, what actually happens is that you need to attach this one to the end of the um, the website's address and this will give you something like this a random text like in 1980 a Las Vegas hospital suspended workers for betting on when patients would die wow that's crazy so this is like some random fact let's uh, copy this and let's go back where here so inside this one I'm going to copy and paste this now I want the JSON format of this so I would say let's just call this one R1 because we are going to have several requests for other APIs so res1 equals r.json so it means that we are going to get a JSON format of that and what it basically does let me show you so this is what we get right so we are going to only display the text part of it now how do we do that we have access to that file that I just showed you so uh, fact can equal it's just a random variable res1 that is a JSON file and I want the text and what was the text so this is the text so I want the text inside this JSON file that is this one this random fact okay so I have this one now let's go to and do another one for R2 so this one is going to be R2 it's going to be about our um, let me change these now R2 oh this one should be R1 RS2 and this one is about board API right about board API this one so for this I need to have this URL API activity and it gives me the the name of an activity so let me do this one here API and activity okay so I have access to that JSON file and what am I looking I'm looking for activity there activity and let's just also call it actually activity here now let's copy this for the third one that is the dog so let's call it R3 RES3 R3 and RES3 and for the dog this is and this will give us like a JSON again and then I will get we look for message which is basically the address of the the image that we can use inside our image tag in HTML so let's uh, paste it here and uh, let's call it dog and this was message and this is actually not the uh, image itself but the address the URL of the image okay so what can we do with this now how can I inform my index.html that I can use these values here well inside this render here I can define some context var variables that is inside a dictionary I can use each and then this they will be available for me inside my HTML so the first one let's go for fact I just call it fact I can call it whatever I want but this one should be fact indeed so this refers to this so I will have access to fact a random fact in my HTML the second one is going to be activity again inside this and then fact and then the last one is going to be 
dog. So dog is going to be dog. Okay, now this should be it. Now let's go to our HTML file and insert them there. So HTML file inside my template. Here, how can we use that? So let's see. So we want to have, let's say an H, I don't know, H4. And then H4. And then inside the H4, I can say like fact. And the fact that I want to mention is, let's say it's going to be a paragraph, for example. And how can I insert that value of fact here? I need to use Django templating language. So to insert variables here inside our HTML, we need to use double curly brackets. It tells this page that this is a Django variable, a Python variable. So the first one is fact that we just talked about. Now, what else? So let's copy and paste this two more times. This one was, um, what was the? So it was a board, yeah, so it was board. And then here was activity. And the last one was dog, but it should not be inside a p tag actually, it should be inside an image tag. So image source equals, and inside these equals, inside these, I need to mention my dog, which was basically the URL, right? Okay, this should work. Let's uh, save this, go back here and let's refresh. And uh, let's see. Let's see, aha, uh -huh, look at this fact. More people are killed annually by donkeys than airplane crashes, a sad but yeah, fact. Board, learn how to French braid, French braid hair. Okay. And dog, this is a dog. Okay, so this works, right? So now we just need to style it a bit. Now, styling is a bit also complicated in Django. It's not just like uh, creating a, a style sheet here in the same folder and linking it by doing this. No, it doesn't work like that. It's a bit more complicated than this. So for that, we need to do several things. The first one is to go to our settings. So we need to go to our setting and we need to go down, down, down. So uh, styles, CSS, JavaScript, these are called static files in, in Django static in the sense that they normally don't change a color is a is a color or javascript it, in this case they are static files so we need to so here we have a static url static and for that we need to also create some static files directories all in capital uh, uppercase letter static files one word then underscore there's that is directories and what is going to be the directory equals um, what is going to be a directory and this is going to be os in lowercase os dot path dot join and then the base there that you just saw we created and inside the base directory that is here inside the well inside the base directory we are going to have a folder we call it static so just like templates we make another folder we call it static you might think and then there's a comma here you might think that's it but that is not it it's not over yet so we need to now go to our uh, urls.py also to let our url know about this uh, this fact this yeah, brutal fact Okay, here we need to import several things. Now, let's start by importing our um, the settings. So we say from Django 
Django.conf, Django.conf, correct. Uh, we should import settings. So now we have access to settings. Now inside the setting, we have to access a static. So we say from Django.conf.urls.static. Uh, import static so that is static file that we created you see remember now we have access to that as well now that we have access to it we need to add it to our URL patterns outside it we say plus and here static inside parentheses settings dot lower uh, uppercase uh, static underscore URL comma in lowercase again document underscore root equals settings dot oops dot static underscore root I uh, yeah this is I can never memorize these honestly I just have to look at my one of my notes I just keep it in front of me next to my laptop I just look at it all the time so yeah this is um, I th I hope I have not make any made any uh, typos or yeah that must be it okay now that we have access to our style sheet let's say so let's go to our main directory base dir now just like templates and create a uh, folder here call it static and inside the static let's have styles.css cool now we have this but our HTML doesn't know about this so we should go to our HTML can I just say style.css no can I also say I don't know something like uh, static like that again we need because this is now uh, available to Django so what we can do and it's the, the correct way to do it is to use something called static so on top you need to load static so that static files are available here this is very important you have to load a static here on your HTML then here now that we have loaded static we can say um, a curly bracket percentage and then static and now our style.css and we have to close it like so so instead of these two you can see there are curly braces here double curly bra brackets but here is one curly bracket and percentage sign normally this is done for URLs and for static files and also for for loops or if statements but if you want to insert some value like variables you normally use double curly brackets okay now we should be good to go how can we check let's go back to our styles and let's just do something random like body uh, background color let's say red let's say let's see if it works so I should uh, refresh and doesn't work for now again and again and again come on okay it's gonna take some time I guess let's go try this one name error static files there's static this must be fine actually so, okay let's uh, run it again uh, run server let's see okay I think it's fine um, but no it's not fine because because we the background color hasn't changed so it's oh that's styles not style here i've mentioned style okay now it should be styles now it should turn red or actually here let's see yes it does turn red so our style sheet works now awesome 
Now we can rock it. Okay, so let's give it a bit of a nicer look, but let's not forget about Unsplash, right? Okay, so uh, for Unsplash, so the thing is for Unsplash, we need to have a form so that someone inputs night, sky, something, and then we give, well, Unsplash gives some image back, right? So we need to have a form here. So let's create a form. So form, the form needs to have a method. The method can be post in this case, and we don't need any action because yeah, it's just the same page. So the, the method is post and let's also close our form here. And the thing is in Django, these forms with post methods, you need to have something called CSRF token that is for cross-site reference or a request forgery kind of thing. It's for security. So just right next to your form that is inside your form, you can have it like that here and percentage sign and you say CSRF and then underscore, I guess, yeah, underscore token underscore CSR yeah okay now we need to have our form what does it have so first of all it has an input and that input is of type text and um, it also needs to have a placeholder placeholder that says uh, enter uh, I don't know a word and then the most important part is this name the name should be let's say photo so this is a very important part. This name we are going to use to refer to it in our views function. So remember this name is very important. And then we need to have also a button to submit. The button is, needs to be of type submit, submit, and something like enter. And button, close it. Okay, so that's basically it. So let's go back here and see how our form did. It should appear here. Okay, nice. We have our form here. Cool. Um, okay, now let's go to our views to deal with our form there, our views. Okay, so what is going to happen to our form? When someone submits uh, a word, let's say, they write in something like sky or night or computer for an image. They press enter. Now, if the request, if the requ request, request method is indeed post, we should do something with it. If the request method is post, what we get inside the post should be our photo photo is going to be what um, what the name of it was uh, photo I guess if I'm not mistaken yeah let's check again mm, yeah here okay yeah so you see the name is indeed photo so this is basically what is going to uh, be there yeah so let's go back to our views now how can we get access to what the user um, writes in remember the name is photo of that input so we say request post and it goes into a list whatever the user inputs goes into a list and, po and that is name is photo right so this is the name that we gave it in the form so whatever the user inputs is sent using post method and we are saving it into photo now photo would have the word but what if it is not a post method then we'll say photo equals let's say none for example nothing okay now we have also access to photo but let's include it here just like next to dog and others so here we can say photo equals photo whatever the user inputs let's save this and let's go back let's refresh oh, again 
Um, yeah, okay, let's write something like night, enter, and oh, by the way, mistake, mistake number one. So I have used it here, but I haven't told my HTML what to do with it. So I want it to be shown under the form. For now, let's just show it as image and image uh, src and then at the end of the image we need to have our photo i will sh tell you why and alt let's just say if, yeah i don't know image yeah image okay so what is this now so what is this why here because remember if i go to unsplash and at the end of this i put in for example i don't know a sky this gives me like sky right so i need to do that actually so i need to ah uh, i have to go back and get the <laughs> url now wait okay so uh this is the how was it uh, let me show you what i mean okay if i put this url here it means whatever the user enters would be added to the end of this url like dog sky whatever and that would be shown so for example this is the url and let's uh let's come here and if i say for the user enters in, i don't know like uh man and then this should be shown oh okay <laughs> this should be shown something like that right now okay now let's save it and let's see if it works let's refresh resend so it sh should show something already yeah nice let's say uh, cake press enter and that is not cake is it oh that's the car okay that's a cake yeah the car is a cake oh i think i i mentioned something like car care okay okay sky it should give me okay like skyscraper now all right so now we have access to this anyways now what we should do is to style it style it much better all right um actually i can also use it inside why not like here it should work the same let's say flower yeah that's a flower okay work the same all right now let's style this so first of all styling this we need to put them in several uh, divisions so for example besides the form and the image we will uh, check actually we'll uh, kind of resize the image as well but let's put each of them in a division in a div so that we arrange them in separate cards so let's do that so here i'm going to make a div with a class i just call it random uh, and random here let's copy this and let's and then here I will close them now so no worries okay now I'm going to close them close the divs div copy this close this one and also close this one right cool okay now um okay everything is in is in place now what i can do is to well first of all i want the body to to center align everything so let's go to our styles now and here for the body i want to text align 
center, that is I want everything to be at the center in the body. And that's the first thing. Another thing is about color. So I am going to this web page called colorhunt.co and let's just use I don't know, this. Uh, so I would use this one, for example, for the background. Um, background color pound key and this one so this is going to be our background and then the color of the text also should be the same and what else um, yeah about the font family so let's also go to fonts.google.com and here let's choose Roboto yeah, Roboto 400. Yeah, that should be enough for now. So let's import it. Go back. And we should insert it up here. And also the font family, Roboto Sans Serif. So this should be inside this. Oh. Okay, cool. Now this is done with the body. Now let's deal with our input and this button here. So I want both the input and the button to have a, some kind of common characteristics. And that is, for example, about the padding. I want both of them to have like a top and bottom 0.4 RAM and left and right, let's say, yeah half a rem and then the border for example the border uh, should be I don't know, one pixel solid and let's just say on a white for now and then to have rounded borders border radius should be maybe 10 25 pixels and uh, um, what else so margin, I want some spacing here as well. So let's say margin, margin bottom of one rem. And uh, let's uh, save and let's do that. Let's see what happens to them. Ah, okay, better. Yeah, the bottom should have a padding of left and right, which should have more. So I will deal with it here. So now only the button. So the padding that we said for this one for top and bottom was okay. But for left and right, let's say five, uh, seven, yeah, point seven rem. And the background color, background color of white. It is white already, no? No, nothing. White. And what about the color the color yeah the color let's see where our color were okay let's yeah choose this one uh, well actually yeah this is the same so this should be also the color for the button let's save this and the last one is the cursor if someone goes over it it should be a pointer like a finger Okay, that's it for our button. Now, mm, let's see. Okay, this is better, but yeah, maybe it's still a bit more. Um, yeah, let's just say one RAM, left and right. So, no. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. What about if I just say like I don't know five rem? That crazy? Is it too crazy? That is too crazy. So two point five rem. Yes, okay, well, better, let's say, a bit better. Yeah, okay, so that's, uh, you can play just with these numbers. 
all right now um let's see so here we have these three divs let's put all of them inside another div let's call it container um, well div class container because I want all of them to belong to like one oops okay now I want to um, say that the container should be displayed as flex so that the elements under container are displayed as flex okay let's go back 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 here <clears throat> we have the container and the display of the container elements should be flex and uh, I wanted to have a width of yeah 100 percent oops um what else justify contents i want the contents to be aligned contents i want the uh, content to be aligned and actually horizontally and there should be space between them so, so space between and also some margin top some margin margin top of uh, yeah I don't know one gram yeah okay so one gram for that now let's go back and see the changes okay you cannot see the changes yet but you will okay let's see now this is about this now um now the divs which are inside this and the image should also be so let's deal with image first so the image i want the image to have a width of 100 percent within the div they are whatever div it is and also i want to have a height i want to have a height of let's say 15 rem both images on a splash and also the dog image and let's give them some border radius so that they're a bit rounded some of uh, 10 pixels that that's for the images both the images and now about the divs there's those random divs so let's say random they were the divs and the width of them i want to be like uh, 19 rem and they need to have a height of let's say 20 rem and also um border let's let's give a border of two pixels solid and um yeah this should be the color let's say of the border of the border and the background by the way background color so they should have a background color let's check for some colors yeah let's give them this background color or yeah, this one maybe yeah, this one and border border uh, border radius as well so border radius of also 10 pixel okay let's save let's go back and I hope I'm I've not run out of my API requests so let's see oh look at this wow indeed isn't this beautiful it is so this is so cool huh now we can also give each div some uh, padding actually this is too close so maybe we can go back and give each div some uh, padding of uh, for example one rem one rem yeah let's do that okay now much better wow cool okay this is nice 
So now you have flowers, you can search whatever you want here, press enter, and then you will have some some pictures. This is a random fact. The average talker sprays about 300 microscopic saliva droplets per minute. Well, I'm a talker. Bored? Take a class at your local community. Now, this is a dog. Okay, so that was the uh, simple project for today using Replit and four free random APIs. Thank you for watching and listening.